Millennial Monday, episode two. It's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I want to read you something that blew me away today. Listen to this. Quote from Martin Luther King Jr. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. I love it. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. That's my whole conviction. And I believe it with every fiber of my being. He was speaking to all of us. I can't be what I'm supposed to be until you are what you ought to be. So that's why we're here, Millennial Monday. I got to tell you about some news. Super good news article that I saw this weekend. Talking about a study that was done for the NBA about millennial attention span and viewership. And the NBA, in fact, all of professional sports is having this conversation where we're looking at uh, millennial attention span. And they're saying millennial attention span is shrinking and we have to respond by changing the way that we broadcast games, the way that we play games, because they can't hang. Now, some people might take that and run with it as an indictment. Culture's going to crap. Uh, Nobody has an attention span. We can't have a conversation. I think yes, and there's another part of the conversation, and I'll get to it. Here's what I mean. One good part of that is we can't deal with nonsense, and that's true. Again, millennial generation, I think that you have a unique intelligence to you. You have access to more information. You're more highly educated. So you're already there. When we're having these conversations, you're already there. You're already there for this one. You're there. You get it. Our attention span is shrinking. Not necessarily the most horrible thing, because we already know where we're going. That's on the good side. It forces us to be sharper and clearer and more focused so that we can get out of the office and go do things. And that's a good thing. Technology um, helping cultivate that. The way that we have meetings, the way that we interact in the workplace. We're able to get to it quicker and so that we can get to the more meaningful parts. Here's the thing. If you get to the meaningful parts and you're not able to slow down, you're not able to chew slow and digest that meaningful stuff, then we have a problem. So we got to hold it in tension and think about both sides. While our tools and our tactics culturally are advancing and allowing us to go faster and to become quicker about processing information and getting it out there and absorbing it, while that is true and there's some goodness to it, have to hold it in tension with the fact that it does shape us and develop us in a way that can bite us on the back end if when we get to a meaningful thing like dinner with our spouse or conversation with a good friend who needs us in a moment or a sunset, if we don't have the capacity because we've been overshaped by technology and tactics that move us quicker, that's a problem. So I want to talk really quick about focus and attention span in a way to maybe counteract that because technology is not going anywhere, that's staying. Culture is not going to shift back to the uh, farming ages where we built fires and went that slow. It's not going to happen. So what has to happen is we have to cultivate a way of being. We have to be long, slow, deep people. We have to cultivate a way of long, slow, deep. That has to be a part of who we are. So then when you give us technology and tools and tactics that allow us to go super fast and super far quickly, uh, we can handle that and manage that. And it actually is used to our benefit and to the benefit of culture. So think about that. Being long, slow, deep people. We call it LSD out here in Florida. Uh, You can call it whatever you want. But long, slow, deep. LSD. That is the antidote to this lack of attentiveness, this lack of focus that is causing a lot of people to be kind of concerned about culture. So here's the question. Are you a long, slow, deep person? Do I have a long, slow, deep way about me? Am I cultivating that? I'm three minutes in, and so I want to get to this uh, quickly. Here's where it is. Long, slow, deep. First of all, a long-term perspective. Just just a longer-term view, a commitment to think about the long game and to be in a stream that allows you to think about the long game. Long-term relationships, long-term commitments, long-term investing, a long view of education, a long view on the environment, a long view on my life choices, just cultivating a longer-term perspective. And you do that today. You don't do that when you're 40. You do that today. When you get to be my age, you start having, the perspective gets shorter because your time here is shorter. You got all you got way more ahead of you. Look towards it. Long-term perspective. Cultivating the long part of your life. The practices that go along with cultivating it, we don't have time to get into all of them, but here's just something for you to think about. If I want a long game perspective in my life, first of all, I gotta get the view, right? I gotta bring it into full view, get the long view. Second though, I need to make commitments. Longer term commitments. 
join a gym, join a church, join a, the Greenpeace, but make a commitment. I'm be there every Monday night. Join the fire department. They drill every Monday. I'm going to be there every Monday. This is part of the pushback that people have against the millennial generation that we can't make commitments. It's not true. We, we can, but we need to cultivate a way where it's actually true that it's true. Uh, we say all the time, it's only true if it's true. It's possible, but we're not doing it. We need to do it. Millennials evacuating the church, volunteerism down. All these things in some parts can be true, traced back to the root that we don't want to put roots down. Marriage, all relationships, you guys have seen it. So here's the thing, I'm asking you to call, think about being a long-term person, being a long game, getting those long lean muscles back. Here's how you do it. Join your church, join your gym, uh, have a long-term commitment with a friendship, uh, but just lean in and think long game. And when that part of you wants to jump out because it wasn't perfect in the first 30 seconds, stay, give it a chance. Give it a chance. Listen to song one, two, three, and four before you dump the whole album. Give it a chance. We're going to be long people. Second, slow people. We're going to cultivate a slow way. There's actually a slow movement. Didn't even know about it. Went to their website. Love it. Slowmovement.org.com something. But the whole idea of slowing down, having a slow way. We've got a long-term perspective. We've got a long game perspective. And we're slowing down so that our way in getting there, we enjoy it. We digest it. It takes 15 seconds to, to register what happens with your food. So here's what I'm asking. In order to get a slow way, some things to think about. First, margin. Put some margin in your life, even if it's two minutes in the morning. Just find space. Find a little bit of space to slow down so you're not crashing into everything. Second, chew your food. I want, I'm going to challenge you. I want you to eat a meal slow. One meal a day. You don't have to do them all. But one meal a day, I want you to sit down, put the food in front of you, let it breathe, be there for a second, take a bite, enjoy it, let it register, think about it, let somebody across the table enjoy it, have a conversation about it, sit back, don't take another bite, eat slow. We're not going to win everything back, but we're going to win the day in those moments, getting a little bit of margin, slow down for one meal. And the second thing I'll give you, just take a walk. I want you to walk. I want to introduce walking back into our being. Walk. Walk. Take the stairs. Walk around the block. Fight back that, that urge in those moments where we can be diverted to this technology and tactic stuff that's going to take us away from it. Maybe just set it down and go for a walk. Go for a walk. I went for a five and a half mile walk the other day just to test it out. And it was glorious. If you can walk to work, walk to work. If you can walk to class, walk to class. But get some margin in your life. One meal, a, one meal a day, eat it slow. And put some walking back in your life intentionally. Just choose to walk. Maybe just for the sake of walking. Long, slow. The third one is deep. We need to cultivate and be people who are cultivating deep and meaningful relationships. We can. I posted an alligator today that walked across the street in Florida because it was awesome and it was huge and it was crazy. So that stuff's going to happen. I'm not saying don't do that, but I'm saying also be somebody who's reading a tougher book. Read a book that makes you look up words. Read a book that challenges a presupposition that you have. Do that. Be cultivating a depth to your being so that that is there as well as the alligator crossing the street. That's all I'm asking. This is a good thing. I'm a long-term person. I'm, I'm learning to walk in a slower way. And I'm being intentional at cultivating a depth. I'm digging out that depth in my soul, whether it's through study or prayer or meditation or any of these practices that slow us down and allow the deeper things to start to spring up. This is the stuff that we want to invite you to. Long, slow, deep. If we're cultivating a long, slow, deep way of being, and we have deep and meaningful connections with people that we love and care about, if that's true about us, you can hand me an iPhone 75 that can do all, read my mind, and it's still good. Long, slow, deep. That's what it is. Millennial Monday 2, don't listen to the haters who are saying because your attention span can't hang. Forget about that. Instead, cultivate practices of long, slow, deep, so that you are a being who can handle the technology and the cultural changes that are being thrown at you. That's it. Believe in you. 
behind you and learning to walk it out myself. I love that I live in Florida. It's 74 degrees, so I think I'm going to go take a walk. Good night. Uh, I cannot truly be who I ought to be unless you are what you ought to be. Have a great night. I'll see you next week.